Hey everyone, it's Gus from Pi My Life Up. Today I'm going to take you through on how to set up port forwarding on your router and also how to set up dynamic DNS on your Pi. So firstly in a browser, head over to the router. This is typically at 192.168.1.1 or 192.168.1.254. Log into your router then head over to the forwarding and then virtual server. This might be called something different on your router though. Now click add new. On this page you will find the following. Now this might be different depending on what kind of router you have but it should be roughly the same. The service port, now this is the external port and I'm just going to use a random number for this one. This is the port that you will connect through from outside your network. The IP address, this is the IP of our Pi. Internal port, this is the port that the application is listening to on your Raspberry Pi. For example, a web server listens to port 80. Protocol, set this to all unless specified. Status, you want this to be enabled. Once you have added everything, just save the rule. Some routers require to be restarted before these rules come into effect, but in my case, I can just go to my browser now. In my browser, go to the external IP address with the port we just specified. If it was set up correctly, it should display the web page for our web server. For the Dynamic DNS, we will need to set up an account with a Dynamic DNS supplier. I'm going to go with no IP, so let's head over to www.no-ip.com. On the sign up screen, just fill out all the details. You will need to make sure that create my hostname later is unticked. Change the hostname to whatever you want, but I am keeping mine as Pi My Life Up. Now click sign up. You should now get an email, make sure you click on the link in this email to confirm your account, otherwise you won't be able to log in. We can now set up our Raspberry Pi so we will have the dynamic DNS update every time our IP changes. I'm going to SSH to the Pi. If you don't know how to do this then you can check out my tutorial on it right here. Now on the Pi, first enter the following command, sudo bash. Now change the directory by entering cd slash usr slash local slash src. Now we need to get the required files from no IP. To do this, enter the following command. wget http forward slash forward slash www.no-ip.com forward slash client forward slash linux forward slash no IP dash duc slash dash linux dot tar dot gz. Unzip the file by entering the following command tar xf no ip dash duc dash linux dot tar dot gz. Now change into the directory by entering the following command cd no ip dash 2.1.9 dash 1 forward slash. Now run make install. Now enter the email address for the account we created earlier. Now enter the password for that account. It should now succeed. Now I'm just going to use the default 30 minutes for the update interval. This is how often it checks to see if your IP has changed. Now you can also set something to run at every successful update, but I don't need anything to run, so I'm just gonna enter no to that. Now it's all set up and almost ready to go. There is just a few more things we need to do. Now we want to add a line into the rc.local file so that it is automatically started on reboot. To do this, enter the following command. nano forward slash etc forward slash rc.local Now enter forward slash usr forward slash local forward slash bin forward slash no ip2 just above the exit zero line. Now exit and save. Now let's start it up by entering sudo slash usr slash local slash bin slash no ip2. Now let's check that it started correctly by entering sudo forward slash usr slash local slash bin slash no ip2 space dash capital S. Yep, so it's running. So let's see it working in the browser. So instead of typing our IP address, we will type the domain name. 
So for example, mine is pymylifeup.ddns.net and the port number is the one we created earlier for our web server. Works perfectly. We can also shut the service off by typing sudo slash usr slash local slash bin slash no ip2 dash kill then the process id. This can be found by using the dash capital S command we did earlier. There we have it, port forwarding and dynamic DNS fully set up. So you can have your Raspberry Pi applications accessible on the internet. Now you will need to do port forwarding every time you add a new application that uses different ports for it to be accessible via the internet. Looking for something new to do? Check out these awesome 21 Raspberry Pi projects that anyone can do. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest projects, guides and much more.